He's Rich Eisen from the NFL Network. He joins us now. Busy couple of days. Um, Do I say congrats on the new Pope? Do I say that? Is that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you want to. I mean, I, I just, I'm, you know, I mean, my rabbi got a, uh, my synagogue got a new <laughs> rabbi, and nobody covered that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, did I you, have no idea how that worked. No white smoke went up there? <laughs> white fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gefilte fish. Smoked white fish. Yeah. Went up. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for congratulating me on my Pope. <laughs> and uh, Fritzy talked your ear off about Wes Welker. <laughs> he's he's like a, a, a little schoolgirl here. He's so giddy. He should be. Uh, he should be. Broncos fans should be. That that is that is exactly the type of move you want to see from a team that has a window of opportunity with one of the all time great quarterbacks who they believe and I think everybody should else believe is is gonna only get stronger and more healthy. Um and that is just a dangerous proposition for the rest of the AFC trying to cover Demarius Thomas, Eric Decker, and Wes Welker with uh, the tight ends that they have and that Manning's so comfortable with and the, the running game that certainly came on strong even even with injury um, last year. That's that's a dangerous proposition to add Wes, Wes Welker to that mix. Who has more catches this year, Amendola or Wes Welker? It's got to be Wes Welker. I mean, this guy had 672 catches since 2007, and the next Closest guy is Brandon Marshall, and he didn't even crack 600. And I think Brandon got all those catches in last year in, in Chicago. You know, so this is a guy who I cannot imagine at age 31 has already hit a speed bump to the point where his production is going to fall off. Now, Manning may, may have to split the ball up a little bit more, but, you know, that's the thing that left me scratching my head a little bit here is Danny Amendola's missed 20 games yeah. the last two years. Yeah. And everybody's sitting here saying, well, he worked with Josh McDaniels. But the one year that they were together was the lockout year, so Amendola couldn't have worked with them in the off season. And then Amendola broke his elbow in the first game of the year and was done for the rest of it. So they worked together for one active game. Do you believe that Brady was not involved? That you know, according to a uh, published reports, uh, that he he was uh, livid that this move was made. That he he wasn't uh, involved in any of the moves. You know, I I don't think anybody could you know speak for for him i mean we had pioli on our on our coverage yesterday when this all happened and i asked him what's brady thinking right now and he said brady's thinking what's next because he knows that he's had to do deal with this many times over whether it's Deion branch troy brown he's he's lost his yeah this is different he's lost his guy now this is different i agree because it did come within days of him restructuring his contract one would think in the conversation he said you know, what's going to happen with Wes here? Um, he can't be happy, but, you know, he's going to he's going to have a, a very talented young receiver who, if he can stay healthy, is going to be very difficult to cover in this offense, just like Wes, Wes Welker was. But he's going to have to start from scratch in terms of in terms of uh, but chemistry think, and all that sort of stuff. But, Rich, you think that the Brady comment is more of a – you know, it's a PR move. Hey, I'm I'm upset with this. You know, if if you know you're getting a younger receiver that fits into your offense better and makes more sense for you, then you're critical of management here. You're critical of your head coach here. Right. Well, so he's in a tough spot. Um, he's you know Welker's his best friend, and again, 672 catches is a, is a lot of uh, is a lot of friendship on the field, and that is something that is in many ways irreplaceable. But he has to welcome Amendola with open arms because this is the guy that's going to hopefully, for Brady, get him his fourth ring. And, you know, I, I always think about you've got to be wary of saying, well, you know, why are we going with a younger kid? I always remember Alan Fanica's comments when the Steelers yeah. went to Roethlisberger. Yeah. And he put it on full blast and then rode Roethlisberger to some of the greatest moments of his professional playing career. He got... He got upset at me, Alan Fanica, because I said, he said, oh, yeah, well, you know, we're going with this rookie quarterback. I mean, he's basically saying, yeah, we got to put up with this nonsense. And I went, boy, what better way to instill confidence in your rookie yeah. quarterback? And, you know, Fanica was upset with me. I'm like, hey, get over it, dude. Well, what? you know, so that's why you have to be leery of saying, well, I mean, why are we going with the younger kid? 
And, and Amendola has got some serious skills. There's no question about that. But I would be very leery of missing 20, having somebody who's missed 20 games in the last two years. And Wes Welker's a guy who blew out his knee in week 17 and came back the next year. Yeah. And he is just, um, he is definitely the guy you know, but it just sounded like both sides, even though part of them wanted this thing to continue, just could not either trust one another or find the spot where they would feel comfortable moving forward. And, um, and last week, you know, you and I, we talked about what would be the thing that I'd be looking forward in free agency. It's like, how will they, the league, how will the market view slot receivers? Well, I think we have our answer. Um, with Wes Welker, again, 670-plus catches since 2007, making half the money per average per year than Mike Wallace. And we've got our answer that slot receivers, I think, in many ways people, I wouldn't say dime a dozen, but that's something you can find in the draft and value at a certain level as opposed to guys outside the numbers. He's Rich Eisen from the NFL Network joining us, Dan Patrick Show. All right, really quick here. We'll go through a few topics. Just give me immediately what comes to mind. Yes. Brian Urlacher, where does he play next season? I think it's Chicago. I think they're going to figure something out. The Packers with Greg Jennings and Steven Jackson. Wow. If I'm the Packers, I'm all over Steven Jackson. So am I. And, you know, I'm all over him. Um, the, the issue with Greg Jennings is they might be sitting back there saying, okay, let's see what the market gets you. And the market may have him wind up in Minnesota where they have to make oh. that move. I think, well, they need to do something. It, they it, have to make yeah. that move. They can't trade Percy Harvin yeah. and then give Christian Ponder, uh, don't give him a new weapon of significance. And if they can, if they can get Greg Jennings and strike into the the belly of uh, Wisconsin in that manner, I think it's a smart move for them. Reggie Bush in Detroit. I like it. I like it. Uh, they, the uh, the the Lions, as you know, started five and zero a couple of years ago when Javid Best was really difficult to handle for people out of the backfield, and uh, Megatron went nuts in that manner as well. The offense clicked uh, better than it's ever clicked. And then Best leaves, and they're nine and seventeen cents. They need somebody in that role, and Reggie Bush is that role. So I, I like that move. I think that was very smart, and I think the people of Detroit are going to love Reggie Bush. Will the Ravens make the playoffs? Yes, absolutely they will. Absolutely. Wow. Um, but they, right now, it's just it's a very dark hour. Yes. <laughs> is this zero dark thirty? <laughs> it is zero. It is a dark hour, but. <laughs> I've learned in the 10 years that I've done this, just specifically with the NFL, that this, the offseason is a full, a full offseason or a non-playing season. It's, it's a long one, and it includes the draft. It includes the draft, and it certainly includes more than the first 48 hours of a league year. Um, let's see what else Ozzie's going to do. Let's see uh, what he does in the draft because – um, if they say, let's say they get Manti Teo to stick right in the middle of the, uh, the field. Um, I, I think people, you know, would definitely talk about it and question it a little bit, but I think they'd feel a lot better just throwing things out there just to give you an idea of how the draft can change a view of how a team is putting itself together for the following year. Good to visit with you. Have a great hey. weekend, buddy. Adios, Steve. All right. Rich Eisen, NFL Network, his podcast available on iTunes and NFL.com.